Hello YouTube pals, it's Tuba Dylan for another review of a musical instrument right here from my studio at home. It's good to see all of you and today we're going to be taking a look at the Shawgirl Horsdorf Heavy Gonch Horn, an instrument designed by Thomas Gonch in Austria by a trumpet maker named Shawgirl who also makes trumpets for the famous Australian trumpeter James Morrison. If any of you know the Nozell Brass, and if you're on YouTube and you like brass and you like brass music and you like jazz and you like classical and you haven't come upon the Nozell Brass, starting with an M-N, Nozill with an M at the beginning, definitely look them up. They're one of the most fantastic brass groups in the world. The lead trumpet player in the Nozzle Brass is a gentleman named Thomas Gunch, who had Shawgirl design this instrument for him. Now, if you take a look at the Gunch horn, it does not look like any trumpet you've ever seen. It has a very interesting bend in it. And yes, it has rotary valves, just like most common German classical trumpets. Now, from what I understand, Thomas Gonch of the Nozzle Brass was looking for a horn that he could play with one hand, but he really wanted to stay with the rotary valve instruments that he was used to back in Germany that he grew up playing. Now, most rotary valve classical instruments will play sideways like this, and you need to have two hands to play it because your left hand is always holding the instrument and your right hand is just barely touching the valves sideways. But on this horn, you can hold it with one hand. If you're playing in jazz, it makes it very simple to throw a mute in your hand and take it in and out to use a plunger or a wah-wah mute, or even just to use your hand to manipulate the sound. It also makes it easy in general just to practice, to grab things, to turn pages, to fend off your children as they're trying to knock over your music stand or jump in your lap, or to hold them on your lap in church if you want to play the trumpet and also allow them to sit on your lap while you're playing. If you wanted to bring it upright and have a straight bell, you couldn't fit a rotary valve section in there. It just wouldn't work, because if the bell was straight, you couldn't have the rotors there. There's room for them because of this bend. Now, another advantage, of course, of the bend is that most trumpet players play a little bit down. This does bring your bell up into the microphone, into the crowd. I suspect what Dizzy Gillespie wanted when he was playing trumpet was angled uh, even at a greater angle than this bend so that he could hit the microphone with his trumpet while sort of playing down to the ground in the style that he played. Uh, it also projected out to the crowd a lot better if it was pointed up to the audience, but that's an advantage you get to this horn. I don't think that's why Thomas Gonch particularly wanted the horn that way, but I think that when he asked Shagirl to design a horn where it had pistons going upright, they figured it out this way, and he probably said, wow, that's great, it's pointed up even better. So it's a great design. It's just absolutely fantastic. It feels totally solid in your hands. When you grab the horn, you stick your pinky in the pinky ring and you have it. It's here, it's secure. Just like, just like any piston valve trumpet, but usually your third valve slide is a little loose, a little poop, fall down like that. This third valve slide is pushed in via this, this tuning pusher or tuning jigger, whatever you want to call it. You have total control of how much you want it out and how much you want it in which is another fantastic part of the design of this trumpet. If you look at a lot of the details on this trumpet and you look very carefully, you see how meticulous the Germans are about putting an instrument together. All of the solders are just done in absolute perfect fashion. There's just not one little bit of solder leak on it. Um, it's, it's every single slide goes in and out just absolutely perfectly, perfect compression. Uh, I've, I've never seen a horn that's just so beautifully put together. Obviously, the craftsmen at Shea Girl take ext pay extreme attention to detail, probably go over the horn lots and lots. If you look at the linkages, every single linkage has a different 
element to it to weight it in a different way. And it makes me think that they did a lot of experimentation with the tonalities of this instrument and the vibrations in making certain linkages much heavier than others and some of them lighter than others. Now this particular horn looks a little bit different, doesn't it? Because it has this antiqued look. Now when I take this horn out in public, and I have a number of times now, everyone comes up and says, what is that? What are you playing? Because most people have not seen the nozzle brass and know what a gonch horn is. If you're watching this video, you might know what a gonch horn is because you're kind of interested in that. But most people don't. And they see you playing it and they go, wow, that's a weird looking instrument. And especially this one with the antique finish, I've had a number of people come up to me and say, did someone sit on your horn? Or is that horn 100 years old? Well, no, it's not 100 years old. It's probably a year old. It's very new. Um, and it's in perfect shape. Obviously, the bend is what we previously talked about, was part of the design. But the antique finish, that's just something Shergirl does. It looked interesting to me. It was the only one in the US that I could buy at the time. And I didn't mind it in the pictures. So I went ahead and bought the horn with the antique finish. From what I understand at the factory, Shea Girl takes a silver plated um, horn like this and they put some sort of chemical on it that starts the tarnish process and makes it go a lot quicker over the period of about a week and it tarnishes and tarnishes and tarnishes and gets really dark and brown and kind of looks like it went through a fire or something and then they finally do a final lacquer over it so it won't tarnish anymore and it just has that look. Now the slides, like here's the tuning slide, the second valve slide, third valve slide, first valve slide, those are all regular silver plated as are the back caps and as are the valves. And also if you look at the valves, they have a beautiful mother of pearl inlay on them that's just gorgeous. I don't know how they got it in there because it looks so thin there, but obviously their craftsmen are know what, they, know what they're doing and they picked out this pretty little mother of pearl to stick on there. We talked about how this trumpet was made to play with one hand, and it definitely was. And I can tell you that that was a brilliant idea, and that Shea Girl has put a lot into this trumpet. If you pick up this horn, you will realize that it's almost the most natural way you could possibly hold a trumpet. It's, I have some very comfortable trumpets. Um, all sort of American piston style, and none of them feel as good in my hands. And I don't have the best hands, I have some carpal tunnel situations going on, so I was pleasantly surprised that the horn felt so comfortable. You just pick it up and it's natural. You put your finger, your pinky through the pinky ring, and your thumb rests on this little hoop right here, and your fingers are on the keys. And you can move it around and there's no chance that you're gonna drop it once you have it in there. And it's the same with the left hand. Your two, your two fingers, your ring and your pinky go through here, and these two fingers go on this little thing they have here, another ring for these two fingers, and it's just, and then your thumb, of course, is going on this third valve tuning slide right here, and it's just super comfortable to hold. It really is, it really feels great. You can reach the bell, you can reach everything, and you can hold it with your left hand. So if you need your right hand to do something, I mean, obviously you're not playing, unless you're just playing bugle style, but you can hold it with your left hand and it's totally comfortable. So it's the perfect horn for being able to manipulate, to hold, to have a hand free. If you like to text and play, this is the horn for you. That sounds ridiculous, but I'm sure someone does it. <laughs> so if you like to text and hold your phone up and play at the same time, I'm sure you'll love this horn because it will make it very simple to play and watch your iPhone as your wife messages you as to why you're at band practice so late and you're not home for dinner. Shea Girl makes a variety of these Horsdorf models. They make the heavy and they make the Vienna and there's a few in between. Now this is the heavy and I was told um, by the guys over at uh, Washington Music Center that this one had the widest dynamic range and you could play the loudest on it. Being a tuba player, being someone who likes to play loud, 
that appealed to me, so I went for the heavy model. I was also told that Thomas Gonch played the heavy model. I figured since it was designed for him, that's also the one you should get. So I got the heavy, and the heavy does have, although you can't tell here, but it's in there, a solid, a solid sterling silver lead pipe. And the lead pipe is short. And one of the advantages to playing a rotary valve instrument and having a short lead pipe uh, is a very crisp and quick articulation. Now a rotary valved instrument is going to articulate quicker than any piston valve instrument. I've experienced that on tuba. You can ask most players, but that's exactly what happens with a rotary valve instrument. Just for some reason, the notes speak a little bit quicker than a piston valve instrument. They also play a little more focused, like laser focused, than a piston valve instrument, which maybe fill the hall a little bit wider. And some, some people think the piston valve instruments have a, I wouldn't say a better tone or a better sound, but they just sort of, it sort of fills out in more directions than in a rotary valve, which is a bit more laser focused. But I like that laser focus, especially in a trumpet. So the horn really does play nice. Intonation is spot on, it's fantastic. Um, all the way up and down the instrument. The low range is tremendous. It plays out really strong. So if you're playing third or fourth trumpet, no problems at all with the low range, perfectly in tune, not difficult to keep in tune at all. And of course the high range screams and speaks out on this instrument. It's almost effortless. The entire range on this trumpet plays nicely, top to bottom even in the extreme high range. I'm not a big fan of playing extreme high range trumpet, but I know some of you are, or some of you just have to from time to time. This horn will not give you any problems doing that. As a matter of fact, it'll probably make that easier. You can push about as hard as you want on this trumpet, Probably not as hard as on some of the big heavy trumpets like the Monettes and the Taylors with the heavy bracing and the big bore sizes. Um, you can probably push and get push more volume out of those trumpets than a horn like this, but you don't really need that kind of volume when you're articulating so cleanly and so crisply. If you're a high screamer, you'll enjoy it. If you're a jazz player, you'll really enjoy it, especially if you use mutes and you use other types of um, effects with your hand. Uh, and if you like to play with one hand on the subway while you're reading a Kindle, you will enjoy it. The one thing that was a little tough to get used to, although now I'm used to it with this trumpet, was emptying the water. Uh, at first, I seemed to be getting water stuck in that second valve. And every time I pull the valve slide out, no water came out, yet there was still water going on when I had the second valve in. So every once in a while, you just need to flip the trumpet a couple times to make sure that the water finds its way out. It's a little bit different. It does have uh, water keys on your main tuning slide, on your third turning tuning slide, on your first tuning slide, um, but it still collects water in places unknown and you have to be a little bit careful about that because if you let it sit and the condensation gets into it, you might have water and it seems like just a very little water accumulation will cause that water popping that none of us like. So make sure that the horn is uh, emptied properly before you're about to play the first note of Mahler's Fifth Symphony or a solo in a Duke Ellington uh, jazz piece or whatever it is, if you're going to be on the spot, you don't want to have water accumulation because you will have that water popping, which causes other problems in the instrument. A lot of people want to know about mouthpieces, what kind of mouthpiece to play with an instrument like this. Different ones were recommended to me. Shawgirl makes one for James Morrison that actually has water in it that I hear is very effective. I'm not sure of the name right now. And there's some other German ones that are good. Now your normal American mouthpiece is actually going to go in a little further because the shanks on these instruments are a little bit larger than an Amer a typical American mouthpiece receiver. Uh, 
but it doesn't seem to affect the intonation or the sound of the trumpet at all. I've tried a variety of mouthpieces on this, including some different sized Monette mouthpieces, uh, some different Yamaha mouthpieces, a wedge mouthpiece, Taylor mouthpieces, and have come back to my favorite staple mouthpiece, which is the Yamaha 16C4. That was my very first mouthpiece when I bought my first trumpet, which was a Yamaha Zeno B flat about 10 years ago. Your endurance isn't quite as good as with a smaller mouthpiece, but this one seems to work very well for this trumpet for me. But I would say tr if you're going to get a horn like this and you're going to spend that kind of money, you probably have enough money to experiment with different mouthpieces, maybe to buy one of the ones that they recommend. I think that fancy water one that James Morrison talks about is three to five hundred dollars. It's very expensive. I have not bought that one yet, although I am curious about it. I've been curious about a lot of mouthpieces and they ended up on the shelf. Let's talk a little more about the rotary valves on this trumpet and the stroke. Now I've never played an instrument that had such quick valves or a brass instrument. I guess a saxophone has quicker valves, but pretty much nothing else. Um, I've played on pretty much the best valves in the world on Taylor trumpets. Um, Yamahas, I've tried Getson trumpets, Carol Brass makes wonderful valves. Nothing's like a short stroke rotary valve. And these that Shegel builds are on, this, on this particular horn are super fast, super quiet, absolutely rock solid strong, and just the best valves you could ever imagine. It's absolutely incredible. They just fly. There's this very short valve stroke wonderfully made springs. I mean, just very, very, very meticulously done. The mother of pearl is beautiful. And just, you won't find better valves. They feel super solid. I mean, you never want to drop or injure a rotary horn, but they just, they almost feel like they'd be okay if you dropped it on the rotors. It's, they feel that solid and that strong. Another interesting part of the design is this third valve trigger or jigger. It pushes out and in the third valve you can pretty much tune up that third valve any way you want. Really all I do is push it out a little bit when I get into the low range and I'm using the third valve in one and three and one, two, and three combinations. The intonation of this horn is spot on, almost perfect. I don't think I've ever taken a horn to a tuner and had it played as spot on and just tack sharp intonation as this instrument. It really does play well. It really has a wonderful sound. You really have to just hear for yourself, listen to Thomas Gunch or some of the others on YouTube play it. It plays fantastic. Shegel said they'll make me a C trumpet. It will be quite expensive, and I haven't decided if I want to order it from them. But they said they can make me a C gaunch horn. And I've thought about it, because I play a lot of C trumpet, and I think that would be fantastic to custom make a C gaunch horn. I think they've only made one other in the world at this point, but they do seem pretty confident that they can build one that will play in tune and will be just as wonderful as this B flat. Well, that's about it for this video and a look at the Gaunch Horn by Shea Girl. I really recommend if you have a lot of money to spend on a trumpet that you give it a try. It's not an inexpensive trumpet at all. You can look up the prices online. It's quite pricey, but it is a very nice investment. It will turn heads. It will turn ears when you play it. It's absolutely a wonderfully made, fantastic, beautiful, just an absolutely beautiful horn and uh, I have never played anything quite like it. If you're interested in buying a gaunch horn in the United States, I think they only have one distributor, which is Washington Music Center. Call and talk to Lee there. A uh, really good guy. He told me a lot about this horn, and I'm still working with him on some other possible horns that I may have Shagel make for me in the future. Uh, 
He seems to be very knowledgeable about the instrument. I did buy it sight unseen and do not regret it one bit. It's one of the most fantastic instruments you can imagine. I do not work for Shawgirl or uh, Lee at Washington Music Center or anyone else endorsing instruments. For my tuba fans out there, I certainly would like to do some reviews on some of my tubas in the near future. It's easier to do it on some of these smaller instruments to start now that I have this new video equipment, but it's coming soon. I have some nice tubas and I'd like to show them to you in a more detailed way using this high-tech equipment so you can really get a feel for the tubas and get to see how they look just like we have with this Shawgirl, Shagirl, Shawgirl, Horsdorf Heavy Gonch Horn. So here I am outside. I thought I would come out here to give a little demonstration of the trumpet outdoors, but the wind is very heavy. There are trees falling down behind me. I'm sure the mic is picking up a lot of the wind. I did give it a chance. Uh, I played a few notes out here, but my chops were pretty blown out after not having played for a few weeks, and I suspect it sounded absolutely horrible. But Anyway, since I'm out here and it's nice, I thought I would give a thank you for watching this video from outdoors. So please tune in to more of my reviews. If you're interested in that sort of thing, brass instruments and the like, I may also review camera equipment in the future. Uh, but for now, so long friends.